Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. I am getting ready to put on some rear wheel weights here for a customer. This tractor is getting ready to ship out to, oh, where is it? Pennsylvania, I think it is. So wheel weights, you know, I always mention having a plan for safety, for counterweight, for ballast weight. When you have a front end loader, imagine picking up a big load up there, a big heavy load with all that weight. It's going to want to tip this way. You have to have enough weight planted back here to kind of offset that, keep your rear end planted to the ground. So there's actually two forms of ballast weight that are going to be on this tractor for the customer as soon as it pulls into their driveway. The one version, of course, is going to be the wheel weights. The other version is actually right inside here going to be liquid ballast. The product we use is called TL90. It's a byproduct of sorghum, believe it or not. Kind of similar to how uh, beet juice or rim guard you might hear it called. The difference is going to be that this is not going to be sticky like the rim guard is. It's also going to be clear or maybe a little bit of a pinkish color to it. Um, it's not going to smell. It's not going to be corrosive. It's not going to freeze. So it's got a lot of the good properties. Very good form of ballast weight. It's in there all the time. You typically are going to get 250 to close to 300 pounds just depending on how full they are liquid ballast you want it to fill above uh, the top of the rim the top of the wheel that's for a couple of reasons one is that it keeps the entire wheel submerged so in case there was a corrosive property believe it or not john deere manuals will still recommend using chloride to fill i think it's four parts water and one part chloride so as long as you keep the entire wheel covered there's not going to be the oxygen there to create the reaction that would cause rust uh, um, or corrosion to, to form the other reason you want to have that liquid ballast above the top of the wheel here is because it prevents a sloshing effect. Imagine if you had uh, a bunch of water down here and here, it's going to want to slosh back and forth as you're moving and traveling along. It's going to create a very uncomfortable ride. If you have it up above here, it's going to kind of prevent that from happening and just help it to kind of keep even keel, so to speak. So even on a small subcompact model like the 1025R, these are both 1025Rs right here, the manual is going to tell you. It's going to tell you how much counterweight you need to have as a minimum. And Unbelievably, this small tractor here needs 1,050 pounds of weight back there to offset what's up here at a minimum, okay? So coupled with the liquid ballast and the wheel weights, you still have to add something onto the three-point hitch. Whether that's a ballast box, it could be a weight bracket with suitcase weights, perhaps you have a backhoe or another large attachment to put on there. It needs some sort of a combination, but it's not one of those things you wanna figure out when it's too late, after you've already picked up those back tires off the ground have your plan in place up front, that way it never happens to you. Really quick, I wanna give you an overview of what we have going on here. These are gonna be 70 pound cast iron wheel weights for the 1025R. They're also gonna come with a hardware kit, what you see here, uh, two bolts, bunch of washers in there, some nuts as well. But this is really straightforward, two bolts, Per wheel weight, okay? They're not stackable, this version, but they are 70 pounds. Now, we can ship these things to you. We ship them all over the country. We can ship them on a tiny little skid to a commercial address is going to be the cheapest way to go about it. Or if you're ordering some other items from us, this is a really easy uh, type of item to kind of fit in the nooks and crannies on the skid without any additional shipping cost. Okay, now let's get to installing them. Okay, so here's a look at a kit. Here's your hardware that you have, and here's the wheel weight itself. The side with the lip is actually gonna be the part that kind of seats right inside the wheel here. And now you will see, take a look down here, you see this cutout, all right? So that's there intentionally to kind of fit around your valve stem that's here. So that's gonna help you kind of align the position of the wheel weight onto your, your tractor wheel itself. And so the next thing to take a look at here is you're gonna have these oblong holes and these smaller holes as well. These uh, circular holes here are gonna be the two that we're gonna utilize for the hardware in this application. So these 70 pound weights right here, they are sort of manageable for one person, but uh, we are gonna have two people doing it today. It'll certainly make the job a lot easier. So we're simply gonna start assembling this hardware now. We're gonna put uh, these bolts on through the back side of the wheel. So we're just gonna get a nut on the back side there, get our lock washer on, and then put a washer on top of that, okay? And so this is gonna go in through the back side of the wheel and protrude out, and then we're gonna sandwich another um, washer and nut kind of right in this area here to kind of keep it tight to the wheel. And then our last one will go on the outside, kind of holding the wheel weight in place.
Okay, so next up here, we've got the hardware on there. You know, again, nuts on the back side with some washers, same thing on the front side. Not completely snugged up. Still needs to be tightened down, but just enough to kind of keep them in place. So you kind of want to position the weight, you know, again, with this notch out here, you know, eyeballing it centered for the same angle as around the, um, uh, the valve stem there. And then that's going to give you your alignment for these two holes right here as well. So I'm going to try to lift this up into place. We'll see what happens. Okay, so now as you can see, this is technically in place on there. It's obviously uh, needs to be tightened down on the back side and the front side here too, but that's kind of the initial uh, next step right there. So now we'll get to tightening it down. Okay, so I ended up using a couple of sockets here, one on the outside, one on the inside. Really not too bad for one person to do this, a little bit easier than um, I was anticipating. But basically you do have that middle nut and washer that are on, on the outside of the wheel. You have the one on the back side of the wheel, the one on the outside of the wheel, and then your third one that's out here. That one in the middle, I can actually, I can fit my hand right through here and I can feel that these things are snugged right down. It kind of just helps to, uh, tighten everything up so that that middle nut there is staying in place and when you tighten the outside it's kind of pulling it together and sandwiching it there and then you tighten this one down on the outside here snugs it all together stays right in place
Okay, well that's really it right there. There's not really a recommended torque setting uh, that the manufacturer has passed along, but it is one of those things, kind of like how the manual will tell you to check um, your wheel bolt tightness. Do the same thing with these wheel weights. The last thing you want is for those to go flying off while you're driving um, in your yard or in the woods or down your driveway plowing snow, that kind of thing. But very good version of ballast weight here. It's nice because it doesn't take up any space on that three point hitch. Kind of uh, just an out of the way place to get some extra weight which aids in traction and that counterweight that you need to be safe on your machine when you're using your loader. If you're interested in getting more information on these wheel weights right here, suitcase weights, or other forms of ballast weight, go to goodworkstractors.com. These are available for local pickup. We can also ship them out to you. These are a very easy, small, convenient thing to fit on a skid with other items. So if you want to get a Spico quick hitch, pallet forks, a snow pusher, a grapple, all sorts of things, we can find a place typically to put these on that same skid there and get them shipped for no additional shipping cost. If you would, please take just a minute, hit that thumbs up button or thumbs down. I don't mind either way. And also, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe subscribe button underneath the video and also read through that description below. That's where you're going to find information for links for these weights and all sorts of other cool products for tractor owners. Well, until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.